Hello everyone, my name is Nipuna Banpola. I am the Executive Director of iVolent International. So today again in January 2020, we are bringing you another iVolunteer series call. And I have two great people with me today, Stacy and Jenna, who are with Savannah Trash Warriors. Uh, Jenna and Stacy, thank you so much for being with us on the call today. I'll give you a couple of seconds to introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Jenna, one of the co-founders of Savannah Trash Warriors. And I'm Stacy from also a co-founder <laughs> of Savannah Trash Warriors. Amazing. Thank you so much for being on the call. So to start things off, uh, tell us a little bit about Savannah Trash Warriors and how did it start? I know it's a grassroots movement. What's the story behind it? Can I start? Yeah. Um, so I met this lovely millennial <laughs> that I love um, at an Earth Day here in Savannah. And she was doing her master's program at SCAD. And I didn't realize it was the program that she was doing for her master's program, but it was about picking up trash. And I wanted to utilize something here in Savannah because I lived in an area I just thought was full of trash. So I met her and I was like, yes, this is where I, this is where I pick up on the map. And so, yeah, so then I put my information down and hoped for a call. And so that never happened. And then it was <laughs> August of that year. Yeah. She became a um, co-op or intern at Gulfstream where I work. And it just so happened it was in my department. And I was like, I know you. I said, I met you at Earth Day. <laughs> and I said, why haven't we picked up trash? <laughs> the evolution happened where on our lunch breaks, we would discuss how we wanted to create a group. And then I'll let Jenna go on because she's really the mastermind behind our Facebook site because she has all that talent. So I let her do that, <laughs> but we discuss it and we um, come up with our plans together. So we go ahead. So we started cleaning up in August, 2018 and we made a Facebook page. <laughs> we put some events out there just like, I don't know if anyone's going to come, but we'll just share where we're going to be. And maybe the first five cleanups, it was kind of just us, maybe one other person. Yeah. And then in January 2019, our first cleanup of the year kind of blew up and there were just tons of people that came out to help. I don't know if it was resolutions kicking in about wanting to get more involved, but that's when things started picking up for us. And we've been going strong ever since. I think too, we, because from the time we started in August, we would sit and discuss, how can we change what we're doing right now? Because we're not reaching people. Like we love picking up trash, you know? <laughs> so why doesn't everybody else? And how do we reach them and really connect with our community as a whole? Because we are a small city. And I think through evolving on Facebook, I think Facebook was an amazing platform for us. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that also helped. And then as people reached out through Facebook or they shared it with other people, that's how we started. And then it was just like, just particular connections started blowing out. And we were so happy. And now people are like, uh, when's your pickup? When's your pickup? I'm like, oh, we gotta get together because we gotta put something out there. So anyway, that's how it's. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Actually, you know, we have been following your Facebook page and you have now a lot of cleanups. I mean, like almost every Saturday. I know the plans are, you know, hoping to change in 2020 because you have uh, bigger goals. But, you know, that's amazing. As you said, uh, Stacey, Facebook is a really amazing platform for sure. So, and we have followed like some of the creative work that you have been doing, even when you're calculating the impact and the collections, you've used little baskets and has kept up with the brand image and things like that. So that's great. How has the progress that been so far? <laughs> yeah, that's all Jenna's work. <laughs> but I know that, you know, there are, I have seen a lot of, you know, uh, organizations around the Savannah community kind of coming, kind of, you know, quote unquote, sponsoring that day, bringing their volunteers, you know, on that day and, uh, you know, helping out in the community. So how, if you speak for the progress so far, right, uh, how has the progress been and how has kind of starting the grassroots movement experience been for, for the both of you? I think one of the best things that came out of us starting Savannah Trash Warriors is that we got to meet other people in the city who care and that are nerdy like us about picking up trash. 
we we like to joke that it's like a kind of zen meditative um experience picking up trash because you're like in the zone you're in the zone you're just head down you're just trying to do thing and it's so relaxing I mean, you do get frustrated. You're like, why are every, why is everybody littering? <laughs> at the same time, while you're doing it, you're like, oh. <laughs> you know? so we, so yeah, yeah. We've got to meet some friends through it and work with other people from different organizations, like Savannah Riverkeeper and Ogeechee Riverkeeper. Keep Savannah beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. a bunch of different neighborhood organizations. The Girl Scouts. Um, yeah, so it's, it's just so awesome to like connect with our community and I feel like that's what our society is missing like everything is great like to be on social media because you got to get your message out but when you actually interact one-on-one -on -one, it's so nice and like I wouldn't have I would have never probably seen her again <laughs> you know but I feel like I earned a friend and we've earned other friends through doing what we do and then it's sort of like throwing a rock in a in a lake. It sort of reverberates, and that's what I'm kind of seeing right now. And I love that. So I know it's it's a, a Savannah Trash Forest is a volunteer heavy organization, right? So how are volunteers integrated into, the, into your organization? And if somebody's looking at this uh, video uh, from Savannah, how can they kind of get in touch? And you know, how can they contribute to Savannah Trash Forest as well? Well, we're always looking for new pickup locations, and we like to work with residents that are in that neighborhood. Okay. So if you live in a neighborhood and you want to do a cleanup, but you need more hands on deck, um, then definitely reach out to us either through our Facebook or website, SpanishTrashWarrior.org. Yes. Because... <sighs> It's hard to reach some of the residents because we know that some of our residents that we do want to connect with may not use social media. Mm -hmm. So we're still trying to figure out how to do that because I know the west side of our city needs a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. But I also know there's a lot of, we need them to reach out to us. We can't just shove ourselves in their community because it is their community even though we're all kind of one community, mm -hmm. but it's kind of different. So we really want to help them as well, because I know that there's people on the West side that take pride in their city, in their neighborhoods as well. And we want to help them to clean it up as well. Cause mm -hmm. Savannah's small yeah. <laughs> and somebody's, small. somebody's trash over there is blowing into somebody's trash over here and vice versa. And it's going in our waterways and we just mm -hmm. want to be, be impactful as much as we can. <laughs> and I know that Savannah Trash Warriors has some amazing plans for 2020. And I just discovered right before the call that Jenna wrote, you know, the blog article that's up on their website. So uh, tell us a little bit about the plans for 2020 and uh, what you're planning for this whole year and, you know, future goals as well. Okay. So in 2020, we are changing our pickup schedule from every Saturday to a monthly schedule. So one weekend a month, we'll be doing cleanups. And we're also changing the way that we're tracking things. So last year we were tracking how many buckets of trash and how many buckets of recycling we were picking up. And while this makes a very interesting infographic to share with the public, we realized as we were thinking about our plans for this coming year that that data might not be as actionable as we had hoped. So we are going to start using the app called Literati, where you document every piece of trash that you pick up with a photo, and it geotags it to a location, and then you can tag it based on what type of material it is and who manufactured it, um, because their brand is probably on the cup or the bag or whatever it is. Mm. So we're hoping that by gathering this data across Savannah, we can give that information to policymakers or business owners that are looking to make more sustainable choices for their business or mm -hmm. for a city. Yes. And I think, was that all that we were doing? Oh, well, we did mention that we were going to stop using the bucket system. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how that will happen. Um, 
we'll probably still have to bring them because it's only once a month now. It was a lot for Jenna because she's the one with the truck. And so I think once a month, we still probably could use buckets, but we won't be dividing our trash anymore. Um, just going to keep it in the paper bags that the city is so nice to pick up for us. Jenna works with our contact with the city waste management and they come and pick it up the day of our pickup after our pickup. So I have to give her a shout out, shout out yeah. for being awesome. Shout out to Carlos Bates at the city of Savannah at the city of Savannah. She's really helpful. Yeah. And she also keeps Savannah beautiful's um, president. president and we sit on the board with her and she's awesome. That's amazing. So this is definitely a grassroots movement that kind of collaborated with so many partners in the city, you know, kind of, uh, you know, attempting to uh, contribute to a need. So just uh, just one of the last things that I wanted to ask both of you, right? Uh, is there any program that you want to talk about in the future that both of you are working on or something about Savannah Trash Warriors? And also specifically, uh, a lot of the people who are actually uh, watching our video, I Volunteer Series, they are inspired and they're thinking about starting their own movement in their local community. And we have viewers from around the world. What is something that the both of you can say and tell them, you know, as grassroots movement uh, starters, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, about, you know, this experience and what they can do to take their movement up? Well, I'm going to start with, I do want to mention that we're both working on a program for adopt a Drain another group that is um, also using the platform that San Francisco has used for their adopt a drain program and so we're basically mimicking their website but for Savannah and we're trying to get more people to know about that and get that word out so that people can adopt drains in their neighborhoods and keep them clean of debris um, because we have a lot of street flooding here in Savannah <clears throat> Plus, we don't want that stuff going into our waterways. Um, a lot of people do throw out trash, as we know. Some of it comes out of their trash cans because you can't always pinpoint where the trash comes from. Um, but if you take ownership of your street or several different um, drains, then maybe we can also keep the trash out of the waterways and stop our streets from flooding. So that's another program we're working along with people on. And then take the other part <laughs> i i want to say something too so one piece of advice that i would give to anyone who's trying to start their own grassroots organization is either make sure that you're going to be living in that place for a while and you can manage this thing that you're creating and really try and make connections with local residents who are invested in the same issue and the same place that you're invested in. Because although over the past year and a half, we know we've made an impact on Savannah just in the amount of waste we've picked up, we might not live here forever. And we don't necessarily know who is going to take over our positions if we were to leave. Right. So when you're working on a sustainability related project, make sure it's sustainable. <laughs> yeah. And that's also what we're working on in 2020 because a lot of our return volunteers, we're hoping to bring them in more so that they can be more involved. So when one or both of us leave the city, that this continues, that mm -hmm. it doesn't just die with, our, with us, that it continues and people continue the process. Because I know there's people that can do the same thing we're doing and continue something we started. So. Yeah, well, that's amazing. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, Jenna and Stacy, for being here. And thank you so much for the great impact you're making in the Savannah community through Savannah Trash Warriors. Uh, I really appreciate it. And for all the viewers of this video, wherever this video is posted on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and Facebook, look at the caption. We will basically tag information of Savannah Trash Warriors so that you can get in touch with them if you're in Savannah. Uh, and you can definitely contribute to the program and uh, keep Savannah sustainable and keep Savannah beautiful as well and uh, help Savannah Trash Warriors. So thanks again, uh, Jenna and Stacy, for all the work you're doing. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your time. We really appreciate it.